Okay, so you might have a lab sheet for this, but if you don't, please make four columns. And in the first one, write down number and station. Then the second column is for your prediction, what you think is going to happen. In the third column, write your observation after you watch. Tell us what did happen, what you saw. And we'll leave this one blank for now, but we'll discuss Newton's laws and how your observation relates to that. All right, let's get started. All right, here we are in the science lab. We're going to go through a number of stations, and our first one is station number one. Please write down in the station number one. This is station number one, and the title is Clothespins and Pencils. Go ahead and write that down. Clothespins and pencils. Um, this is a clothespin. A lot of you use a dryer, washer and dryer at home, but uh, you'd use these to, to put uh, clothes on a line. It has a pinchy end, uh, like a mouth, and then it has uh, the, these levers that I can pinch. And if I just let go, they will snap. And that's what we're going to use is the snapping action. We've taken these and we've tied up the um, open end. and. We're going to light some fire, bring some fire to this thread, and when it burns through, it'll go from here to here. It'll snap open. These will move out. The question then is here. I've set some uh, aluminum cubes. They have the same mass, so they basically weigh the same. And we're going to light this part on fire. What will happen to those cubes? Please write down your prediction. What do you think will happen? And if you're going to tell me they're going to move, in terms of distance, how will, they, how will the distances compare? Is this going to move five centimeters and this one moves one centimeter? Do they both move eight centimeters? Do they both move 20 centimeters? Does this one stay still and not move at all and this one goes up or down or which way? What, what, be clear about where do you think they will go and how will their locations at the end compare? All right, write that down. All right, write that down, and here we go. We'll add the flame. Here's the exciting part. All right, so we started right about here. And so if I measure to the closest end, just estimating, that looks like about, I'd say, nine centimeters here, from here to over, nine centimeters. And this one, uh, about 11, 11, we'll say 12 centimeters. 12 centimeters and nine centimeters. So not exactly the same, but fairly similar. Similar. Okay, that was your first prediction. Go ahead and draw a line. Uh, you don't have to change the name of the, um, the station. Let's do it again, but this time we're going to make a change. We're going to not make them the same cube, but now we have two different cubes. This one is still aluminum. It's metal. This one is wood. It is lighter. It has less mass, so it weighs less. And I put the tape on because um, I want them to have the same type of slidiness, right? And so uh, we could call it friction. And so now we're going to make another prediction. Metal, lighter wood, and I want to put a marker. Okay, that's where they are, our line. Okay, here we go. Where did that wood one go? It should be all the way over here. So from this point, the metal one went, go ahead and write down six centimeters. And the wooden one is all the way over here. And that went approximately 40, 50, 60, about 68 centimeters, about 68 centimeters. Uh, quite a difference. Okay, did that match your prediction? 
And you might now start thinking about why. Why would this lighter one go farther? And is that always the way things work? Is that what you'd expect? All right. Let's start our next, our next station. And this one, right down. This one, write down station number two, and the name is Domino's. Okay, here are my Domino's. I'm going to take this uh, measuring stick. I'm just going to sweep along the bottom, and please make your prediction what you think will happen. All right, here we go. Write down your observation. What actually happened? All right, let's go to our next station, station three. Please write down station three or number three in the first column and the title Beaker, Card, and Pennies. Beaker, Card, and Beaker, card, and pennies. Write that down. I have a playing card here, and I can move the playing card by just tapping it. That's one way I could get into the beaker or put something in the beaker. So your prediction, I'm gonna take a poker chip here, and I'm gonna put it on top of the playing card, and I'm gonna uh, give it that little kick. And please describe or predict what will happen to the poker chip. Do that now, write your prediction. Write your prediction. Okay, here we go. I will go ahead and flick this and please uh, write down your observation what happens. Here we go. Three, two, one. All right. Writing down your observation. Okay, now draw a line across your paper, and uh, it, we're still in station three, but we're gonna change it up a little bit. Um, under uh, prediction, write down with eraser. An eraser. With eraser. Now, the eraser is a little different than the poker chip. So what do you think will happen this time? You know, find a little room on your worksheet or just go a little bit below. Write your prediction. And here we go. And it, it did drop through. Some of you may have predicted that, some not. Now, to be honest with you, it sometimes goes in and it sometimes doesn't with the same kick. I'll try it again. Oh. <laughs> and this is where the science isn't working out exactly as I think. But um, the, the difference is there's more, there's more drag on this eraser, as you can imagine. So a lot of times when I do it, it falls out. To be honest, the faster I do it, usually the better it, it uh, works, it drops in. But if I don't really give it a nice good kick, it will usually fall out where the poker chip will usually go down. Okay, that was number three. Let's move on. Four. This is the egg spin. Go ahead and write down egg spin. All right, we have two eggs. 
Uh, one of them is hard boiled, one of them is not. I'm not gonna tell you which is which. Your job is to guess which is which. Don't guess yet. Um, the only clue I'm gonna give you is spinning them. It is not about the color of the eggs. That is not important. I, I picked different colors so you could tell them apart. You're talking about the brown one and the white one. It's not about their weight. If we were together in class, some people pick them up and want to shake them and listen. We're not doing that. Just spinning. So go ahead and make your prediction. In your prediction, write down. I think when, when Gentilly tries to, or when the teacher tries to spin them, I think the boiled one will do this, and I think the not boiled one will do that. Of course, uh, you could talk about boiled as solid and the uncooked or raw one as liquid, the solid egg and the liquid egg. Let's, let's use those terms. All right, so go ahead. I'll give the white one a spin. There we go, it's on its way. I'll give the brown one a spin. Well, okay, now that was weird because I'm giving them the exact same spin. But this one is like not, there we go. Okay, it's, it's, like, it's like this one's lazy. Might be the word I'd use for it. Let me, let me try that again. I'll, just to show you, maybe I'll start with this one. Same spin. So this one just feels lazy. Is that what you wrote down? Well, well given that this one is lazy, which one's, which one's liquid, which one's solid? Which one's cooked, which one's not cooked? Which one's liquid, which one's solid? Okay. Okay. Now, draw a line and stay in station four and under prediction, put hard stop. Write down hard stop. I'm gonna spin these eggs again but I'm gonna stop them. When I say hard stop, I mean I'm just gonna put my hands on top and let go, real quick, just stop. What do you think will happen? Write your new prediction. Based on what you saw before, what do you think might happen now? Okay, so uh, this one is easy, right? This one is lazy. So let's get it going. There we go. Three, two, one. Obviously, this one stopped and this one kept going. What is that telling us? What, what is that? How is that a clue for us? Which one is liquid and which one is solid? I'll do it one more time. Three, two. This one is wobbling a little bit, but this one is still spinning. All right. Write down your observation and make your guess on your paper. I think this one is liquid. I think this one is solid. We'll talk more about it later. Please write down, under the first column, write down five, number five, and hero's engine, hero's engine. Hero's engine. Okay, this is a device that uh, I believe the Greeks or Romans invented to uh, um, convert or create energy. Here we have uh, a container with these plastic straws that are kind of melted through the container. I'll pour water into it. What will happen? Make your prediction. Go ahead and write that now. Okay, here's our observation. Get ready, I'll hold this still. Oh, 
All right, so obviously we saw that it was uh, spinning around. Uh, many of you probably said the water will come out, okay, but did you predict the motion? Now that we've done it, you've seen it, write down what you saw. What did you observe? What actually happened? Okay, so our next station is number six. So write down six and car crash. Car crash is the title. Some of these might be out. Crash is the title. Some of these might be out of order for numbers. Don't worry about that. If they're out of, num out of order, that's all right. Now this one we're not gonna do because it really doesn't work that well, but I think you can get the idea here. We have a, a rolling car and we have a cork, this is our passenger, and then we have our track, and we can have our car and passenger roll down the track, uh, starting down here at the number four hole, and so I let it go, and it stops, and the passenger will fall out. Uh, for this, make a prediction. What will happen when the passenger falls out? How will it change if I make the track more steep? If I make it more steep, what do you think will happen to the speed? Okay, I'll let you think about that. And then as it hits on a steeper track, how would the passenger falling out be changed? How would it be different? Now, we're not doing it because it doesn't really work each time. The passenger, sometimes um, when it hits, the passenger fall, you know, goes up in the air and just falls right here, even if it goes really high or uh, goes forward, which I would expect, but sometimes even for weird reasons will hit something and then bounce backwards. So it's just not very consistent. But what would you expect in the real world? The faster a car is moving, what happens to a passenger when they stop suddenly? All right, make your prediction. There's no observation, but you can talk with your teacher about what would happen. Okay, number, okay. number 10. Uh, we don't have the printout page, but this is number 10. Um, you don't have to skip any lines, just call it 10. After six comes 10. And it's sphere gust. Sphere gust. I could say. Sphere gust. Sphere gust. I could say. But I think sphere gust is a better choice. It just, it just sounds better, you know? Okay. Um, now I could use, whoops, I could use this fan and you know, I could blow some air over these spheres. Uh, I had now two spheres. One is a golf ball, solid, more mass, heavier, ping pong ball, uh, hollow, open on the inside, less mass, less weight. So if I line them up here and I give them a gust, what do you expect would happen? What's your prediction? Will they both stay there? Will they both move at the same speed? Will they move at different speeds? Which one would move differently? How would one move differently? I'm gonna give them the same blowing power with this fan. All right. All right, here we go. And some of you might now wonder if this is glued down, but if I, if I really, there we go, a little bit. Okay, so another way I could do that is I could use a straw. Um, if I wanted these to go the same speed, if I give them the same kind of blow, well, obviously, again, the ping pong ball wants to move more. So, and it's like this one is lazy. The, the golf ball is lazier. So I'd really have to give this one more, more force to get it going and then lighten the force on this one. Let's see if I can kind of get them going the same speed. And a little bit there for a second. I think I was really just lucky. But um, all right, there you have it. Sphere gusts, same force, different masses. What happened to their speed? All right. All right, 
Next, write down number eight, station eight, uh, and the title, tissue versus ping pong and golf ball. Tissue paper versus... and golf ball. Tissue paper versus a ping pong and a golf ball. And so here we have our setup. Again, our more massive golf ball, our less massive ping pong ball. Um, we have a barrier here, so I'm gonna drop the sphere from this point, each one, and they're both gonna land separately. Two, two, we'll do it, two trials on this uh, tissue paper. What do you expect would happen What's your guess as to what would happen? Write down your prediction now. All right, let's see what happens. I put the ping pong ball here. We'll give it a drop in three, two, one. I'll do it again, three, two, one. and it bounces off the tissue paper. Maybe you predicted that, I don't know. Let's try the golf ball. Three, two, one. And there it is. So, see if that lined up with your prediction. Is that what you expected? Is this the way the world works and what you're used to? Probably. Okay. Eight, now we go to nine. The sphere roll. The sphere roll. These are sphere roll. These are all golf balls, so all the heavier more massive than the ping pong ball at least. Okay, I take, uh, these are all touching. I take one ball to the side. I'm gonna give it a roll. It's gonna hit this ball. What do you think will happen? Make your prediction. Maybe this ball's gonna bounce off and these will stay in place because they're heavier, you know, together collectively, or they could all fall off the track, or maybe all of these are gonna roll, but they'll move much slower. Let's see, here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, one ball kind of rolled off, but I can do that again here. And yes, it kind of affected the others a little bit, but pretty much, you know, each time we gave it a kick, one came off the other end. Okay, what if I take two? So go ahead and draw a line and write uh, two, two spheres. You can write two balls if you want to. So what happens when I roll two spheres? So what happens when I roll two spheres? Make your prediction. Think about what happened last time. Maybe that'll give you a clue, right? Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. All right, let's do that again. Three, two, one. Okay, basically, two, uh, these moved a little bit, but these two kind of shot off to the side. Um, I don't know if this would work with three. It gets a little sloppy when I work with more, but let's just see what happens. Yeah, not so good. Uh, you may have seen something before where you have steel balls hung from a harness and they kind of go swinging back and forth. We call that a Newton's cradle. So this is kind of like that. Okay, next, number 11, spring scales. Spring scales, these are Spring scales. These are devices that have a spring inside them that can be stretched and we can measure the amount of force needed to stretch, stretch it out. And so I have two of them and I'm going to take them and run them against each other like a tug of war. 
and we want to be looking at these numbers. Right now it's at zero here and should be about at zero here. Now I'll start pulling and you can see the string, the springs are stretched on both and right now I see uh, 1200 here and on the other side it's about 1200 here also. So we're pulling uh, them apart in an opposite way and the amount of force is the same on both sides. Equal on both sides but the pull is, the forces are pu pulling in opposite directions. All right. And that takes us to this last one. This is, uh, please write down station seven. Station seven, vinegar and baking soda demo. Baking soda demo. Vinegar and baking soda demo. Now we'll show you the setup and then you can make your predictions. I'm going to take, I've taken a toilet paper, uh, t toilet paper tissue and made a, uh, I put baking soda inside it and rolled it up into like a burrito. And I have a hundred milligrams, milliliters of water, of vinegar. I'm going to pour that into a bottle, like a plastic bottle. I'm then going to put the baking soda burrito at the top of the bottle. Try not to let them connect too much. Put a cork on this and then uh, lay it down so that the vinegar and baking soda mix creating carbon dioxide gas. As it creates more and more gas, it builds up pressure inside until something happens. So uh, please write down your prediction. What do you think is gonna happen? And um, what's gonna happen to the cork? And is anything going to happen to the bottle? Okay, so here are my supplies. I, um, here, 100 milliliters of vinegar. Goes in the bottle. Vinegar. Okay, I drop this in, trying not to let them connect too much. Turn this around. Okay, cork it, get ready. Here we go. Now I'm lining this up so the neck of the bottle is right against the tape. For the record, if the camera can fall over here, the uh, just to tilt because we'll come back down there. The the cork came over here, hit this wall, and then bounced over there on the floor. We can see it right there. So the cork took tr quite some travel. Our bottle, the neck of the bottle, used to be here, but it's moved back that's f that far. So for the record, it's gone back approximately, not quite 30 centimeters. Let's call that 27. Yeah, 27 centimeters, approximately 27 centimeters. So not only did the cork move, which you may have expected, but something else moved. And you'll talk about that with your teacher. Uh, some of you only probably wrote about the cork, which is fine. That's like the main thing. But how many of you predicted that the bottle would also be kicked back, in this case, to the right? Okay, now uh, number your next column 12. Station 12, and the name is Swinging Sack. Swinging Sack. sack. Swinging Sack. And so, here we have a sack of pennies in a, an old jelly bean bag, and it's hanging from the ceiling. And it's basically not moving. It's kind of drifting a little bit, but it hasn't been touched in quite a while. And so 
we can call this an object that's just uh, not moving. It's at rest, right? So, and it's still at rest. It's just staying that way. What would it take for something to move it? Now, your prediction, what's gonna happen to it? If I don't touch it, what's the prediction? If I don't touch it and nobody else touches it, what's gonna happen to this sack? Make your prediction now. And let's see if you're right. Okay, well, we're looking at it some more. And it's just sitting there. Again, some people call this at rest, or, well, it's lazy. Do we expect it to start moving on its own? Okay, now draw a line and let's do a second part for this section, number 12. And this time, let's have it swinging. So I take it, this time I touch it, and I'll give it a toss in the air. There we go. Now, what's your, observ uh, what's your prediction? In one minute, what do you think is gonna be happening in one minute? Is there any reason it should just stop all by itself? What is your observation? Brown one is lazy. Okay. I'll give them both a stop. Three, two, one. Now, I should be able to do it better. I'm going to try it on this. 
The only problem is sometimes they hit each other and spin yeah. off. But it's flatter. Okay, here we go. They're both spinning the same, and boom. And you, that might be uh, when yeah, I zoom in. Coming close, yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, again, now write down which one do you think is you know uh, write your observation. What happened when they were stopped? And as we could see, the the brown kept spinning, and the white one stopped. Why? What does that tell us about whether one is cooked or not? So this will typically stymie them. Okay. Like or it'll be random 50-50 on which one. So why. do they need to know which one's boiled and which one's not beforehand no, before their guesses? Sure. I don't okay, so this is, this is strictly like, okay, you've seen these two different things happen. Now take a guess as to whether it's boiled or not and then explain why you think it, the one that's boiled did this and the one that's not boiled did that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the difference basically is the, the actions of a solid and a liquid. Because as I get these going, this one's like a rock. It's just, you know, all the, all the molecules are tightly knit because mm -hmm. this is the one that's boiled. Mm -hmm. This one's liquid inside. So yeah. that yolk is just not Spinning, wanting to yeah. spin. And then once I get it going, then when I stop it, that stops dead, but the yolk is still spinning here, yeah. so the rest it's of the just, egg starts it's to spinning. Yeah. Now, what I do in class is, and maybe what I could do now, is um, I get two of these little petite water bottles. You ever see the little super tiny ones? Yeah. And I freeze them the night before, but I take one out early or I microwave one or whatever you need to do to get it halfway. It's nice to have the egg, uh, the, the uh, cube still in the middle, a little like yolk of cube. It's a little bit flipped because it's a solid. But the point is um, you have a student do it at their desk and that's the one that's frozen just spins. It'll, it'll kick up on one end, you know? Mm -hmm. and, just, and then the one that's... Uh, half melted and want to spin. So it, it allows you to kind of have an x-ray view on this, which I think is helpful for the students. Okay. Okay, next we come.